everybody, it's us here at Retro Edge Duo for another episode of Red Talks. Red Talks. Red Talks. We have now crossed into the double digits. It's episode 10, as you can read up there, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's pointing at it. Ooh, magic. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> or if you're just listening on uh, audio. Yeah, I'm you're not seeing it. it. Yeah, you're not seeing anything. <laughs> so for you audio people, if you're enjoying the audio version, great. Uh, but if you want to see the full, and I mean the full podcast, we it usually shows do a some... lot of stuff that you wish you didn't yeah, see. We normally <laughs> don't say that. <laughs> They'll definitely won't come back, even in the audio sense. <laughs> <laughs> I don't no, want to hear just, about uh, the stuff I don't want to see. <laughs> definitely come check out our YouTube channel uh, as far as Retro Engine Duo on YouTube. Uh, easy to find. And you'll see it's the low subscriber count one. <laughs> There's not any other channel with the name, so uh, that, that's how you like lead into it. Like, yeah. yes, we're the only channel with that name. Like, like, hey, we're the channel with no subscribers. <laughs> no, we you have we have subscribers. We have four something. of you, all four of you, and we thank we you. we thank you. <laughs> but yeah, come check it out. We have uh, special segments that are just for the YouTube version of the podcast that you can see, including some retro game treasures unboxing that he usually does, uh, and then with some him. extra uh, new segments and. You know, pieces that we find hilarious. Um, but yeah, the ev last episode, we talked about some weird accessories and everything. We got some really fun things for you today. But we're actually going to do a special sort of episode where we're going to do a few news pieces that were going on today or in the last couple weeks. Um, but, I mean, there's not a whole lot going on. I mean, Starfield is coming out. And that's what everybody's talking Everyone's about. Everyone's <laughs> talking about Starfield. And, like, yeah, we're excited, too, but we are retro gamers, so... Uh, we got to at least have some variety in this show. Yeah, <laughs> so, I mean, uh, we do intend to play this, but as of recording, it will be released publicly uh, tomorrow. tomorrow. Yeah, um, so September as of, 4th. Yep, September 4th. Today is the 4th. Um, so, as of right now... We haven't played it yet, so we will reserve that for another time because we absolutely do intend to play it, even we're, though we are mostly retro. We're not those special people that get the early release copies. No, you have to have six subscribers. You have we to have, have six. Four. We have four. Yeah, we you have guys four. can help. Go subscribe to the channel. <laughs> yeah, just two. Of even you audio takes. people come to the YouTube channel. So, but um, in all seriousness, I mean, we we really do want to play it, um, but we're not going to talk about it until we do. Yeah, I definitely want to play it. Uh, sadly, it's only single player. I'm hoping that somebody in the PC world will put a mod to it, just like the way they did with Skyrim in the last year. We did talk about it on the podcast, actually, as far as um, that somebody did a mod with the, with multiplayer on Skyrim, That'd which was pretty cool. Too. So yeah, uh, Skyrim in space comes out tomorrow. <laughs> That's what it should be titled. <laughs> but yeah, um, <laughs> as uh, he mentioned uh, 37 and a half seconds ago, this is going to be a uh, slightly special episode. We're going to touch base with a couple of newsworthy items that we found interesting. But we're going to do something a little bit differently. Instead of talking about video game controllers that smell like pizza or uh, handhelds shaped like chicken nuggets, we're going to talk about something from our past. Yeah, let's you know, let's dive a little bit into our history, uh, as far as our histories, and give you some stories about you know, especially moments in gaming that just wowed us, like you know. The future has arrived, you know, kind of moments. And we'll get into that soon as far as, uh, but we want to obviously get out of the news stuff out of the way so that we, you know, we can get to that little meat and potatoes. You know, we had some yeah. good meat just a little bit ago, too. It's good. Uh, just saying. Dinner you know, is what good, he's talking about. Yeah, good steak. Yes. Steak. <laughs> but let's jump right on into this. Um, one think... of the things that I thought was really newsworthy, um, Atari... For those of you that may or may not know, um, they launched the Atari VCS um, a while back. I, I say do remember 2020, that. 2021. Yeah. Um, and it was kind of like a little emulation station type thing where uh, you can pretty much download all the games and play them in HDMI and all that kind of stuff. And uh, I wanted one, never did buy it, still can, but um, they discontinued it um, earlier this year. I'm sure there's tons of out there yeah, still. They're, they're still pretty expensive. Like, they're still about $200, $250. But um, it's not what everyone was wanting. They looked cool. They looked futuristic. It looked like pretty much an updated Atari. But as of last week, Atari announced the Atari 2600 Plus. Ooh. And this is like right up my alley. Like, uh, I, want, I wish I could show you guys over here to uh, my right or left. There's a wall of 2600. There really is. Right, you're literally right next to him. Yeah, like right there. But, right um, there. So it's one of the things that I'm really passionate about. I mean, I love 2600s, and I think they're like the coolest thing ever. Yeah, you have a lot of different variations of yeah, the of that console. 
So, what is the 2600 Plus? It is basically... It's not quite a mini console. It's a little smaller than the standard 2600 by the looks of it, but you can play 2600 and 7800 games on this. Skipping the 5200 because <laughs> it was a piece of crap. How the controllers were. Well, yeah, for sure. And some of the games didn't really work that well. Yeah. But no, it makes perfect sense. The cartridges, are, I think, are the same in terms of the size they and are. the type they yeah. are. So they have the same uh, pin pattern and the same size, and so the ports work. Um, I do know the original 7800, which I can't quite reach it. Um, pocket. Ugh. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. The original 7800. This <laughs> yeah, thing. there it is. That's the uh, original. This is the original 7800. This is the original 2600. So the pins are the same, but the 7800 is the first backwards compatible system. Which is pretty cool, actually. So uh, that's a good way to lead into what Atari's doing here. They can make this new 2600 Plus play both systems games. Yeah. And uh, they are releasing this with, I think, 10 release games. Um, they're releasing a cartridge with multiple... Um, I want to read these correctly. Uh, yeah, so they're releasing a, a multi-cart. basically has Adventure, which is one of the most popular ones. Combat, that combat. one was, Yeah, combat's fun. Uh, but that one was pretty much a packed-in. I think in, it was a packed-in game, yeah. Um, Dodge'em, Haunted House, which we actually streamed. Yeah, Haunted House is pretty cool. Uh, Maze Craze, Missile Command. Very classic. I remember reading about Missile Command uh, production that they had nightmares about nuclear war whenever they were uh, developing Missile Command. Um, Real Sports Volleyball, Surround, Video Pinball, and... Howard Scott Warshaw's Yars Revenge. Which is a very classic game, too. Really the, great game. For the 2600. So um, these are going to be about one twenty nine ninety nine, so about 130 US dollars. That's the whole console. Yeah, the yeah. console. Um, and it comes with the car that cart, um, I think, one of the joysticks, um, and it's HDMI output with yeah, widescreen. So it's going to be the cool. CX40 Plus joystick. Um, like you said, the 10-in-1 cartridge. Uh, HDMI with a widescreen mode. And it's going to have a rock chip, uh, 3128 SOC in the uh, in the console. Yep, I don't know what that means, but... Uh, it's mainly just how it's being powered. Um, so there you go. And the, the size of it, I know, like, we were talking about the size of the mm. console, and I was like, maybe this is the width of your laptop, which is sitting here on the table. And I think it's about maybe half of the original 2600, as far as what we were kind of coming to I don't think conclusion. it's quite half. I no? think it's like maybe... Two-thirds? Two-thirds. Sorry. <laughs> but um, looking at the photos, it is about two and a half widths of a game cartridge. Yeah. Of the original game cartridge. Yeah, because the cartridges have to be the same size yeah. as the original 2600. So when we were looking at it and seeing, like, because there's a video, obviously, I'll, I'll probably have it playing right here as far as showing it off. Uh, you can see that the cartridge, as far as being the size that it is, that, you know, fits about, you know, two more next to it. Yeah. You know. And so uh, there are the some other peripherals that come out with it if you want to scroll yeah, down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can, um, and these for an additional cost, you can get Berserk. Enhanced, enhanced edition. edition. <laughs> uh, CX30 Plus Paddle Controller. I bundle, think that would be pretty cool to get. Great for like Pong stuff. Yeah. And beat them and eat them. You have to have that. Uh, Mr. Run and Jump. I'm not joking. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Run and Jump for 2600 and the CX40 Plus joystick another one an, so you can have another one so, so you, you can have two players yep and so uh, which this does so it does yeah the joystick is another 25 dollars, and the games are an additional 30 yeah i mean the original console will come with like I said the, the 10 the 10 and one so if you want just those 10 you're set you just buy the console and you get the one joystick the 10 and one eight you know cart and the hookups and everything you need yeah. for it but otherwise they have these other additional things which i think would be great to have the cx30 plus paddle like controllers yeah I, um, I really want to see what the input looks like yeah i like can you not i mean they're the cx i want to say they're the same then a cx40 joystick should work which is your standard i'm thinking the Atari original joystick. peripherals might work i don't know i'm not going to assume anything i'm curious like if the, if that's the case because i remember seeing in the video they're they're the same inputs as far as and which you know, funny enough, you know, history lesson for you guys. Uh, Genesis. Actually, yes, yeah. the Genesis, uh, actually, the Genesis controllers will work with your Atari 2600 uh, consoles. 
Does it work also in the 5200 and 7800? With that uh, input? The 5200 has a different input. But the 7800? The 7800. Uh, it looks the same. It looks the same, yeah. It looks the same, but I have not tried it. I wonder if that works. Maybe that would be, you know, a video that we can do as far as <laughs> experimenting with different controllers. Yeah, you know? I mean, I do know that a 3DO <laughs> controller input is the same as a Genesis, but the, the pins do different things. Oh, okay. And so, like, okay, if so you plug why. it in wrong, it could, could fuck up something. Fuck up some yeah. We don't want to do that with no. these consoles. Mm -hmm. You know, some of them are hard to get. <laughs> so, but yeah, we can try that with but us. Yeah, so yeah, um, so obviously, Atari's website is where you can pre-order. The pre-order is available now. They will ship in November. November is when it's being released. Um, so, it, like I said, it's one hundred twenty-nine ninety-nine as far as U.S. dollars. Uh, apparently, Amazon does have a setup for pre-order, but it, I mean, what we're seeing is a European price for as euros at yeah. at ninety-nine ninety-nine euros. Um, but, uh, yeah, it should be, like I said, the pre-order is available now and we're looking at the picture of the, um, the CX 30 plus, but, uh, it's like a bundle bundle. Yeah. It has it's got like games, four, it's got four games one. and one cartridge that Let's utilize see. the paddle controllers. It says breakout. Um, let me pull this closer. Uh, like Canyon bomber. Night Driver and Video Olympics are what's in the uh, bundle uh, for the CX-30+. Plus. Yeah. Now, granted, if this were me, you can get these games at pretty much any retro store in a bin for a dollar, maybe two dollars. So, that's that's what I would do. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, it's a cool, neat novelty item. Uh, I'm, I'm wondering how if it's going to sell out. I, I mean... Know. I mean, it, it seems like a very interesting way to me to kind of jump in on the mini console thing without being kind of locked in, you know? Yeah. Like, you have to be able to plug in this other stuff and mod it to, you know, make it have other games. But Atari's like, okay, let's just make it to where it can play original cartridges, yeah. which is and a pretty cool idea. Yeah, and it plays 2600 and 7800. Yeah. Which is a, a great, you know? Yeah. This is something that's definitely, you know, what, I mean... What was the VCS compatibility? Do you know? Like, I know obviously it was 2600 games, but. Yeah, I mean, they were trying to do something new. It wasn't just, hey, we're going to update our 2600. It was more like, like Tempest 3000 type stuff. Yeah, I'm curious what, I'm, I'm going to see what was compatibility with the VCS. You couldn't plug any games into it. Oh, really? It was yeah. all like digital? Yeah, it was all it was a digital console. Yars recharged. See what I mean? It's all like updated versions. It of is, that stuff. yeah. Okay, so yeah, this makes sense. So they had stuff, yeah. Okay, a lot of stuff, but it's a lot of updated, kind of revamped original games. Okay, so that's how they. It, it makes sense why it didn't work out too well. That only like really hardcore people were after this. You know, like Missile Command recharged is just. A whole bunch of Tempest four thousand. Yeah, see, I'll see what was, was three thousand. Yeah, you're right. You're yeah. close. But I mean, you were you were right on the idea that it yeah. was like an updated version of Tempest two thousand. Yeah. So, but I mean, it's it's kind of a more of a uh, novelty for people who had the original. Um, you know, people our age or people a little older than us that had Atari's when they were younger. So I think this will be a little more accessible because this is not trying to push like revamped or remastered or rebooted like games on people this is you can play your original cartridges if you have them you know and then we'll have these enhanced versions if you want you know like like berserk and mr run and jump and things like that you yeah. know that are you know and they'll probably put out more of these as far as these Maybe. these types of games but this is just kind of cool uh, I'm i'm eager to see what they come up with and you know wouldn't be it would be fun to have, just for the hell of it. So, pre-order now uh, uh, through Atari's website. Um, easy to find. I'm sure you could easily just Google, you know, Atari's official website and find this on there. It's probably going to literally be on their front page, if anything, if yeah. they're trying to promote it. But yeah, uh, the Atari 2600 Plus that plays 2600 and 7800 games comes out November. November. Woo. Um, in other news, want to do the PlayStation? Yep. From yeah, yeah, PlayStation. So this is something close Hot to water. Julian's heart. Hot water. That's what I'm going to call of. it. Dark patterns. Yeah. 
I wouldn't say <laughs> hot water. Really... I mean, this is more like detriment for everyone that uses... Uh, hot garbage is what it is. PlayStation Plus, people. All right, so PlayStation Plus prices are going up. Again. <laughs> uh, it's a, God. Uh, by up to 40 a year, depending on which tier you decided to, to go with. But all of them are going to be more expensive than before. So... Here we go. PlayStation Plus Essential just Which gives you standard stuff, standard stuff that was there before any of the extra premium. Uh, the yearly price was six, $60, which is what 80. I've been playing. Yeah, me too. Um, now it's going to be 80 Gross. Uh, PlayStation Plus Extra, uh, the yearly price was $100 even. Now it's going to go up to 135 <laughs> And finally, Premium, which is their way of trying to compete with Game Pass, you know, is now going from $120 to $160 a wow. year. Woo, so in buddy. other words, like they're, so basically what they're doing is rewarding you by charging you more. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. I hope the monthly games are getting better. No. <laughs> probably not. No. Uh, so... Let's see. I'm just kind of curious what's going on here. See if there's anything in particular about this as far as... Uh, the Okay, so this is uh, what the company wrote uh, on... <laughs> this is going to literally... Uh, in two days, this is what's going to change. From filming. So by the time you hear this, it would have already It's already, already happened. been changed, yeah. Um, so Sony buried the news at the bottom of the new PlayStation blog post. So they put this at the very bottom of the page so that like, people oh, would try surprise. to skip over it. Yeah, Sharing the PlayStation Plus games getting added for September, uh, which includes 2022's Saints Row reboot. Boo. Terrible. Um, we also wanted to let you know that starting September 6th, we will be increasing the price for PlayStation Plus 12-month subscriptions globally across all benefit plans, the company wrote. This price adjustment will enable us to continue bringing high-quality games and value-added benefits to your PlayStation Plus subscription service. Yay. Thank you, Sony. And you need PlayStation Plus in order to actually to play, play online. online. Yes. So, these changes won't impact current subscribers until their renewal date and don't ap uh, apply to the pay-as-you-go monthly prices or three-month price. So the prices for pay as you go, like month to month, and three months will stay the same. Uh, the annual ones will still be cheaper than the monthly ones, but less so. But if you really want to compare, it is still cheaper than uh, Microsoft's Game Pass, which went from fifteen dollars a month to seventeen. Oh, and yeah. there's no discount annually, according to this. So that's still a pretty good bit cheaper than that. It's saying here that PlayStation's uh, premium. Is still forty four dollars cheaper than a year of Game Pass, so whatever. So however you want to, you know, take it, as in it's good or bad. This is what's going to happen. I mean, it's one of those things you have to expect, especially as time goes on. Inflation comes in. You know, things get more expensive, and we just have to take a buy the shit sandwich and deal with it. So I mean, to <laughs> me, it, it seems a lot like what the music industry was experiencing uh, in the early 2000s whenever uh, file sharing and like torrents became readily available. Uh, you had people trying to create like Napster and things like that, trying to get ways to get more stuff out there and then charge for it, which is why Napster was sued in like what, 2000, 2001. Um, so you have companies now like Spotify and Tidal and all that kind of stuff that charges subscriptions to get music. And so they're slowly figuring out exactly how many people want to do it, how much people want to pay for it, or what they're willing to pay for it before they can do it. And now, this has kind of leaked over into gaming as everything is slowly switching to digital and you know, in favor of that versus actually physical content. So they're still trying to figure out how much to charge, how much they can make it to that they're making profit. Because, I mean, digital is way cheaper for these companies to make and maintain. They don't have any overhead of having to go and print discs yeah, and publishing cases. And, and, you know, like, how much money do we have to give Walmart for selling our shit? They have basically none of that overhead. 
but now they have to figure out how they can make that money digitally. Like, yeah, we'll sell the game here, but how do we give you access to play it? How do we make money by letting these people play it? Yeah. And that's what's going on. They're trying to figure out what to charge. And so we're in this little, like, no man's land of this um, fucking virtual (laughs) battlefield of uh, how much to charge. And so they're just trying to figure this shit out. Yeah, because, I mean, uh, even though we just, we mentioned Starfield, which is only going to be available on Xbox and PC, because, you know, it's Bethesda, and Bethesda is owned by Microsoft. Um, they're charging brand for just a simple standard copy, even digitally, sixty nine ninety nine for that game. That's expensive. Yeah. I mean, obviously, the it's $10 more than what we were used to years ago. Um, but that's just the way things are going. Like, ever since this generation, PS5, Xbox Series X, um, I mean, obviously, Nintendo is not doing this um, with the Switch, but... Just the new, like, consoles in terms of PS5 and Xbox Series X. And it's affecting, obviously, in, a, in the PC world. Um, we're now up to sixty nine ninety nine as the standard price yeah. for a brand new game. Now, I mean, we can always go back and look at some of these old games. Um, God, I'm trying to remember which ones were, like, kind of famous for this. But back in the uh, Super Nintendo days, there were some that had, um, some of them had like the Super FX chip or something and they cost a little more. Yeah. And you're like, shit, I have to pay this much money for this game. And I'm talking about, it was more than what we're having to pay now. So with inflation, it's crazy. And so it's just one of these type of things where like, I remember the kind of across the board prices went up were, uh, the beginning of the PS4 lifespan, you know. Okay, what what you got? Yeah, I'm just I'm just looking as far as um, what the cost of games were at the time that the NES and the SNES were running around, as far as brand new wise. Um, uh, new games were around sixty bucks. At least that's what this person said. I was hoping to get more of a yeah. This person's quora. kind of. A... <laughs> Let's see. I was hoping to, yeah, sorry, continue. (laughs) But anyway, what I'm saying is, you know, a lot of the games back then, um, they were kind of all over the board in terms of what their release prices were. And I don't really know where I was going with all that. But I mean, you know, okay, so there were usually 50 back then. Um, The PS3 stuff were usually around 50. And then it popped up to what fifty nine for PS four stuff new. Yeah, I and mean it's it, that's commonplace. Yeah, you know? but you know fifty nine is usually what you see. Some of it cheaper, some a little more, but usually that. Oh yeah, yeah. Here we go. There's there's actually some, um, uh, you know, advertising like sort of deals like if tape like KB like KB toys or you know yeah. Uh, so like even looking at this brand new copy of Super Metroid for Super Nintendo. Was fifty four ninety nine? Super Street Fighter two was, was 60, seventy. Yeah, sixty nine ninety nine. Oh, there's a surprise. Look above that one. I'll let you say it. <laughs> Shaq Fu. I think that's sixty four ninety nine. Sixty four ninety nine was attached Imagine to it. Imagine how disappointing that would be. <laughs> Getting that game and just being so bad. <laughs> Hold on. We'll, we'll go back to that. So uh, it looks like the Super NES All Star set, which was the pretty much the system, was only one thirty at this time. So this was ninety four. The system was already out for three years. Yeah, because that one came with two controllers, uh, and then of course uh, it had Super Mario World in the Super Mario All Stars set. Oh, actually, it says it's and so Super okay. Mario World and, and then uh, and Super Mario All Stars. Okay, okay that, that was. I think that's the cartridge that has Super Mario World also in it as well. I have that one up there. Um, yeah, it's Super Mario All Stars. Because there's two different versions: the yes. one that doesn't have Super Mario World and the one that does. Yeah, <laughs> and I have the one that does. So, so 130. That's not bad. Well, but yeah. If you're thinking about the time though, mm-hmm. that's the equivalent of like what three hundred dollars, four hundred dollars, then with, probably in, adjusting for inflation. But the thing is, I mean, you you go back then, they have a lot of overhead. I mean, they had to use injection molded, you know plastic yep. and custom made chips. A yeah, lot of nothing these things, was digital at the time. Yeah, I mean, you remember that, I don't know if you remember back then, um, with the fucking internet dial up, yes. like 96 sound yes. like a fucking fax machine, but it's just, well, I don't know. Try what, that again? I can't do the noise. Please try. It was like <laughs> Yeah, 
Thank you. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm, I'm, I appreciate you humoring me. I mean, obviously, anybody that was alive during that time and was, like, very much aware, you know, and was using the internet, you know, in its early stages, knows how a 56K modem dial-up sounded, you know, sounded, sounded, sounded. sounds, sounds, I'm using words. <laughs> but, you know, back to what the prices are nowadays and all that kind of stuff, I mean, yeah, we're in this weird area where they're going to keep up in prices until, you know, people like start bitching about it. And right now, no one is. Well, there's price charting. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Earthbound talking about the. Uh, we, we, that has nothing to I do know, with what we're I'm talking sorry, about. I just, just caught my eye, you know. Anyways, Earthbound sucks. I hate no, it. No, it doesn't. It doesn't suck. It's just <laughs> different. I just hate it. I don't like it. Have you ever played it? Yes, I've tried to play it. I tried to see what the hype was all about. Anyways, before I end up making some people angry, you know, if they ever see this. All four of you. <laughs> yeah, all four of you. Hopefully we'll be to six and then we can, <laughs> and then we'll get our, uh, what we're going to get, the advanced copy of, uh, what, what game? Oh, God. Um, Starfield? Starfield, yeah, we get yeah. an advanced copy of that when we get two more subscribers. And then they just, they go away. So, otherwise, uh, PlayStation Plus, yeah, prices are going up. Better deal with it. Um. If you're doing the yearly subscriptions, so... Welcome to the future. Welcome to the future, yeah. Uh, but back into the past, there was an old Mario mascot costume that has been found and has been restored. Yeah, this costume was seen in the 1990 Nintendo World Championships. Oh, yeah. So, uh... This thing's pretty disturbing. <laughs> I'll put it up right here. Yeah, you can see uh, a little weird, large-headed Mario. But, um... Let Julian cycle through the pictures for a minute. Oh, yeah, yeah. He, I'll show uh, you. His innards, I like that word, uh, his interior thermoplastic had melted. Ooh. And he looked like he had become methed out and lost his teeth. <laughs> he was breaking bad? <laughs> yes. Yes. Yes, thank you. <laughs> but uh, he has been found and... 85% restored? Yeah, that's roughly what it said. It was like they stable and restored. So that's pretty And the, cool. obviously the picture I'll show <laughs> here now as far as is the restored version of him. Um, you know, showing the how well he looks. He, and he looks fine. Obviously they, they had to replace the eyes. And you, <laughs> you pointed it out when we were looking up these articles. <laughs> how just disturbing the eyes look. The new eyes. Like if you yeah, look the at new the original eyes. picture where, with him at the Nintendo World Championships... He's like looking dead at the camera. The new photo. Now he's like. <laughs> he looks like he's seen some shit. Yeah. He's, he's seen some stuff. Yep. See. I know what the difference is. The Nintendo World Championships picture from 1990. Versus the new one. What movie came out? Mm. That stars Mario that will make him do that. Since then. Well. The 1993 the... Super Mario Brothers. Yeah. I was going to say The Wizard, but, you know. No, that came out in, like, 88. <laughs> I know. That's what was the inspiration for the Nintendo World Championships, actually, was that movie as far as The Wizard. Um, they were like, you know, Nintendo was like, you know what, we should really do that, you know, and have a competition. That everyone has to wear a power glove. Hence where the... Uh, so bad. The World Championship cart, uh, as far as the original one in the competition, and the gold cart that was in Nintendo Power mm -hmm. are now sought after. As far yeah. as in collector's realms. You know, that's something I've never seen in person. I've yeah, never I would seen love to a see World that. Championships cart in person. I would love to. We've, we, you, know, you saw stadium events when I've you went to... I've seen a few stadium events, yeah. yeah. And that's like the next Holy Grail, you know. For, um, for NES collectors, yeah. Yes, for NES collectors, absolutely. And I mean, the, <laughs> the stadium events that I saw was sealed. We did actually mention it here on the podcast. Yeah, I, probably a couple months ago. Yeah. But um, it was a sealed copy that was graded for like thirty thousand. Yeah, thirty seven thousand. I, I thought it was way higher than that. Like I was, I was like, like that's crazy, you know. Yeah. But now I I understand why, you know. If I were someone like Mr. Beast or something like that, oh, I would go and get it and like open it on camera just for oh, the fuck of it. Oh <laughs> no! Exactly, you know. <laughs> uh God, that would be so upset. <laughs> like, hey, look at this graded copy just, of State. Everybody's like heart just breaks. Like all the collectors, like. I'm like, why did you do that? <laughs> why? Why? <laughs> um, but anyways, <laughs> so the mascot's been restored. Uh, of course, um, let's see. 
let's see, the Video Game Museum Art of Nintendo Power are the people that actually took the time um, that they restored the, the mascot uh, costume from the 1990 Nintendo World Championships. Um, that was back in January is when they got it as far as this year and start rebuilding and, you know, getting it ready. And obviously you had to put new eyes like we were joking about. Uh, so I'm hoping that it'll be, yeah, it's going to be actually be part of a museum exhibit. So that's cool that it's restored and it's going to be preserved. Yeah. You know, it's a piece of history. It this, is. You I mean, know. It's, it's kind of like finding a, uh, a system, uh, that never had his ROMs dumped, you know, or a yeah. game that never had a ROM dumped. And so you're like, this is a part of the past. You know, this is something that we need to keep going. And I'm really, really glad as awkward as it is, because I mean, it was a goofy looking thing to begin with and they're doing a really good job restoring it. So, you know, I don't want you to think that it's fucked yeah. up, but I mean, it's this weird looking Mario thing that <laughs> it's kind of nice to have it back again, you know? So they did, uh, put a recent announcement about it, uh, as far as, you know, after it says they arrived in the museum's hands in June, uh, it was found in January, but it, it came to the museum in June. Um, and then it got a uh, transformation at that point. Yep. Um, it says, uh, our Nintendo had this announcement saying our dream project is almost finished. This is a restored official Nintendo Mario mascot costume circa 1989. Nintendo used him for a number of events, including the 1990 Nintendo World Championships. When he was found, his, I think you mentioned this, his thermoplastic interior was completely yep. disintegrated, uh, which could not be repaired. The person who found him originally began restoration using hard foam, which is why he looks so different. His bones are totally different material. <laughs> uh, when we purchased him and took over, it, he was about 50% of the way there. We commissioned new eyes, did more work to the face, and mounted him semi-permanently to a mannequin. I am beyond pleased with the result i knew we wouldn't be able to get him to a hundred percent based on the irreversible work that had already been done but i'd say he's a good 85 percent he's stable and he's safe <laughs> it sounds like they're not quite happy with the work that was done before they got a <laughs> yeah, hold of it yeah uh apparently he will be making an appearance at pax west well the art of nintendo will be making an appearance actually that just happened yeah uh, art of nintendo will be making an appearance at pax west which was this past weekend, so it's happened. <laughs> Art of Nintendo Power. I did, yeah. not, I did not mean to aim that cough at you. Oh, I oh, apologize. You're good. You're good. Uh, we're not sure whether the Mario costume will be on display at the event, um, but we recommend going along anyway if you're in the area. Blah, blah. Of course you can't now because it's over <laughs> you nah. know, when you're watching this or listening. Sorry. <laughs> okay. So. Anyway. So, yeah, those are our uh, three little news segments um, that we're going to touch with. Um so we're going to do something a little bit different, um, something that we had talked about just before we started recording. Um, and you want to take over with what you wanted to talk about? Yeah. So, I mean, this is a special thing where, you know, I figured we'd dive deeper into our histories a little bit, you know, share some stories. Yeah. You know, it's like being in the campfire, you know? Around, yeah, Around the campfire. Uh, hint, hint, coming up. Yeah. But, um... I know for those of you that have been listening, like this is our 10th episode. Um, our first episode, we kind of did this a little bit. A little bit. We kind of touched base with our histories and just kind of breezed through that so we could introduce ourselves. Yeah. But with this one, we're going to kind of center on one topic. Uh, one thing that for us is whenever we kind of realize that games were like, wow, look at this. Yeah, this just, makes me want this. Or this is the wow moment. Just the stories that yeah. really encapsulate you know what and I, I would say these kind of stories are the type of things that happened to us that kept us into gaming as hard as we did yeah because it just you you can't ignore progress whenever you see it you know um so i i mean i've, I've got a pretty good story to start with i don't know what you've what you I have, have a in couple your mind. Of small things in mind but i'm gonna let you ramble kind of take over yeah ramble. What do you have? i'm gonna copyright sorry <laughs> um because you know, is that Led Zeppelin song? That's what that was. The Ramble on. Yeah, Ramble on song. Okay, I'm going to take your word for it. So I remember, um, obviously the first time that I got my NES, this was the first console I ever got, I was five years old. and But this was very late into the Nintendo. Mm -hmm. And I can't really say that 
the first Nintendo really wowed me. Like, in yeah. the sense of other things down the road. You know, it, I mean, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. And I played it a lot. <laughs> I mean, I had Super Mario Brothers and Duck Hunt in a pack uh, together, obviously, the cartridge that has both games. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was the the set that had the orange zapper and two controllers. Cause, you know, so this the is, action again, set? Yeah, I think so. I think it was the action set. Yeah. If not, I'll, I'll correct myself here. Um, as far as on post. But, um, yeah. And I'll never forget, and this is like a small little moment, like of laughter here. <laughs> <laughs> is that it? I'm not yet. No, I'm sorry. Yet. Okay. Uh, my mom trying to play duck hunt with the zapper. Oh, I think you oh mentioned this Oh my God. Yeah. I'm pretty sure like where she was like, as soon as the duck comes out, you know, she's like, <laughs> like, like <laughs> shooting everywhere and mi like missing she never every, hit the ducks. she never hits the ducks. Like, yeah, cause you'll get only three bullets, you know, before they like, <laughs> it flies away, <laughs> you know, the dog laughing at you. Um, but anyways, <laughs> The first time anything really wowed me, like, I mean, just absolutely blew my freaking mind. We already had got into the Super Nintendo at this point. Okay. And, but I was perusing the arcade. You know, I would like beg. I know beg. where this is yeah, going. You know where this is going. I know where this is going. Yep. Okay, I would beg right. and beg my mom to take me to the arcade, like, which was at the mall. And Concord? I were, yes, okay. Carolina Mall. Yeah. Um, which is still there. Not the arcade, but the mall is still there. Yeah. Um, I've been in there once. <laughs> You've been in there multiple times. I know you have. Bullshit, I've been in there the mall once. <laughs> I had a lot of memories there. I've been um, there one time. And outside of the uh, mall, uh, next to JCPenney, was the arcade. And actually now it's a police station, which is <laughs> kind of funny and ironic. Um, but it was called Cyber World. Cyber World. It's kind of a cool name. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's it's the 90s, so... <laughs> and Did it have a really colorful, confetti-looking carpet? They might have. <laughs> I don't remember what the carpet looked like. Um, I just know at this time, I'd already have been playing Street Fighter 2. Um, as far as I used to go to a mom-and-pop sort of video store, um, which I would love to talk about at some point as far as those, those memories. Um and I would play Street Fighter 2 because they had the arcade machine in in there. And I'd beg my mom again, like, please give me a quarter. Please give me a damn quarter. <laughs> begging chat. Yeah, I was, I was a little shit. <laughs> give me a quarter, mom. Give me a quarter, mom. <laughs> like, you're getting a game. Like, you're renting a game. Like, no, give me a quarter. I want to play Street Fighter. You know? And I will never forget going into Cyber World one day. And this is the day that the owner got Mortal combat yep that's you knew it was this is a there. story i knew that's what it was okay just in case they didn't they've never heard it this is the story of that i was literally too young to be playing mortal combat let's just be honest here okay you know <laughs> at this point i think i was seven six <laughs> seven years old somewhere on there um whatever year the arcade rolled in um but i could see the owner's face and i remember it vividly to this day he was excited. He knew he was making money. Like, he knew this was going to be a hit. And he rolled it out there, and he said, Hey, everybody, come check out this new game. Like, he was crowding people. He's like, oh, because he, like, had multiple kids who were into the fighting games. Because at this point, Street Fighter Two had been dominating the arcade. And knockoffs, well, not really knockoffs, but really good, like, other fighting games. Like, you know, the SNK stuff like for the uh, Neo Geo and all that were out too. And this was something that nobody had ever seen before. Oh, the digitized actors yes. and everything, yeah. And the blood. The, the blood. blood. It became standard. Oh, yeah. and No blood code needed. And so he was he was like, he's calling them over. Because you know, you'd had like the hardcore Street Fighter fans. and Random trivia. You know. <laughs> Do you remember the blood code for Sega Genesis? I don't remember the Because I had Super <sighs> Nintendo. I had the I had the sweat. You had the sweat. Version. You had the sweat. I had the sweat. <laughs> A B A C A B B. Ah, oh, nice. Yes, nice. there you go. You're, I did. I did play the Genesis version though. Yeah, uh, that was the as one. As a kid. Had. Anyway, I didn't mean. I did not mean no, the hijacker good. story. Good. No, I like that. <laughs> um, and he plugged it in, and he set it to free play because he wanted. He was only. He's like, I'm only going to set it to free play for the first like hour. After that, you know, we'll put I it want back. Want your tokens, fuckers? <laughs> yeah, give us some tokens. He wanted <laughs> us to try it. He wanted us to figure it out. Like. 
and I'm, I'm a little kid, so there's like kids in there that are like 12 and 13. Oh, the and, big kids. Yeah, who are like pushing you out of the way. Like, Move, you're kid. kid. Get out of the way, Move, kid. squirt. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of the way, squirt. <laughs> and I was just like, I, I remember, you know, the first match, and somebody did the uppercut. Because he, he, like, whispered in, like, because they had a chance to play this game. Was this the pit? Uh, no, no, no. It was just in general. Like, okay. He was, like, telling them how to do it. So people would be wowed by what they saw. Because, you know, when you hit the uppercut. It's impressive. It, yeah. And then the blood happens. Like, even more so. You know. Um, and somebody did it and hit it right on the person. And everybody was like, was that blood? <laughs> like... You know, because nobody, nobody was doing that, like, as far as in the other games. And, oh, God, I, I remember. And I, I, I think, I don't know how he knew, but the owner also whispered into this one kid's ear how to do Johnny Cage's fatality, which was the uppercut, the head off, like, you know, in the original arcade game. You know, like, rolls? Yes. Yeah. And, because it's, it's one of the easiest ones to do. It's literally four, forward, forward, high punch. That's it. Easy to do. Um, and the kid, because I guess he knew the kid would win because the kid was pretty good at like fighting games like Natural or something along those lines. And this is the first time anybody's playing this. So, you know, you know, it's a, lo a little different, obviously, than Street Fighter's controls. And kid won. And he's like, he's like, you know, he whispered in his ear how to do it because you got to do it. We got to tell him real fast because, mm. you know, there's not a lot of time. And he did it. The sky went dark. He did the uppercut, the head went flying off, and everybody went, ah! <laughs> <laughs> ah! like, and everybody was like, how did you do it? You know, because everybody was trying to figure it out, you that's know. That's great. And, and that's, that, that's all it took. People that were not inter initially interested started coming over. Like, to see what the commotion was yeah, about. Yeah, like, even, there's even, like, little, little girls in there playing, like, you know, they were playing, like, Pac-Man, the usual, like, stuff like that. They weren't interested in like the boys' games and stuff Don't like that. Don't be sexist. Just saying. I'll make you play the loopy. <laughs> we'll get to that soon. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. But uh, yeah, they started coming over. They're like, "Whoa!" Like, and I, oh my god, like, and for the next like 45 minutes, everybody was playing. Like, everybody was stepping up to play it. You know, people were like, "Come on, let me play. It's my turn." You know, of course, the kids were trying to fight. Or the, the owner had to stay there and like kind of let. Like, all right, you you lost. You step off. Kid you was know? on there too much. You like punch him in the ear. Like, yeah, Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> yeah, and uh, squirt. I got to play once. I lost because I didn't know what the hell I was doing. You know, <laughs> I think I chose Scorpion. Um, good, good choice. Yeah, it's a good starting choice. Um, but yeah, he had like six characters. So. Yeah, yeah. Was, you know, Liu Kang, Kano, Raiden, Sonya, Sub Zero. You know, Johnny Cage. Johnny Cage is usually my main now, so um, when I play the original. But yeah, that just wowed me. Absolutely. Because again, digitized actors, it was the r real people that, you know, they looked realistic and, you know, and it just blew my mind seeing that, you know. So that was that's my Mortal Kombat story. Seeing it the first day that it rolled in. So that's kind of the, the your first big, like, like wow, whoa. look at this. Yeah. At that point, I was like when Super Nintendo had Mortal Kombat for Mortal Monday, you know, if it coming out, I had to have it. Mortal Kombat. Yeah, I, I was one of those kids. Yeah. I became one of those kids very quickly. <laughs> yeah, it was like <laughs> I, I didn't have access to like a whole bunch of like magazines or uh, Nintendo Powers or anything like that. So it's pretty much whatever we would go to like Walmart or Kmart, and I would browse the electronics section and see stuff. Um, we didn't have an arcade in our town. Um, the closest one was a good 45 minute drive away. Now I was in Aladdin's castle. Aladdin's castle. That yeah. sounds pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, it's actually a big chain back then, but, um, for me, the biggest thing I was like, wow, look at this was browsing Walmart. And I'm, I'm a huge car guy. You know, this all of racing games. I love driving cars in real life, but, um, was seeing the need for speed on 3DO. Yeah, the 3DO version is surprisingly the best version. Oh yeah, I mean I I like the PlayStation version, but that the PlayStation wasn't out yet. This was 94. And so I begged and begged and begged like it had my favorite car in there which was a Dodge Viper. 
And I'm like, I begged for a 3DO and the Need for Speed for Christmas. Like, get me that, please. And that's what it was called, the Need for Speed. The, the Need for Speed, yes. <laughs> and surprisingly, uh, I've got a 3DO for Christmas and the <laughs> Need for Speed. And looking back on it and how much that thing costs is really fucking surprised I got that for Christmas. But being able to go in and actually, like, it, it didn't look like Lotus Challenge 2 or Top Gear it looked like the real cars. And you, when you go into the inside view, you had like the interiors with the steering wheels and all this stuff. And I'm like, this is crazy. And like, I, I thought like I was looking at the future basically. The and future. so I was able to go and play this. And then it had like the little uh, full motion video cut scenes and all that kind of stuff. And it's cheesy as shit. But I had this one guy that was kind of taunting you whenever you would drive. And... It was just, it would get me so riled up. I'm like, this fucker, you know, look at him. <laughs> and I, you know, I would be, what, eight, nine years old getting mad at this dude for beating me in a Lamborghini. But for me, that was kind of when I started noticing graphics and noticing how things were starting to look. Yeah. And I thought, as did everybody, I thought that full motion video was going to be the thing. Apparently, everyone that 3DO also did as well. But, you know, it wasn't another year until the PlayStation came out and we were all wrong. Yeah, man, did did the PlayStation really, like, drop everything, like, in terms of, like... And I mean, like, in terms of, like, just wow factor. Yeah, I mean, like, the funny thing is, is, like, so I had the 3DO, and that was kind of, like, my main system for a couple of years. And I didn't get a PlayStation right away. Right, right away. Um, I... It was my next system after the Super Nintendo. It wasn't for me. Um, I went and grabbed the... Well, not grabbed. It was a couple more years, and I begged for a Nintendo 64. Because I wanted San Francisco Rush. That was what was cool about the neighborhood I lived in um, at the time. Because I had the original PlayStation 1. Uh, and one of my friends up the street had N64... And had he had the PS one and the N sixty four. He was he was rich kid. Yeah, his parents definitely treated him, you know, pretty well in that regard. Uh and then another person had I remember I, I think they had this yeah, they had the Sega Saturn and they had the N sixty four. Um so it was like a whole multitude of us kids with different systems. So we were getting to play the new stuff. Like, cause then we were like Hey, come check it out. You know, like, you know, we'd all gather at whoever's house had what system, you know. And, oh, you're going to laugh your ass off. I better. That that one kid that had the uh, PS1 and the N64 and was treated really well. Like, he died. You know, no, he didn't he die. He didn't die. Okay. He also had the freaking Philips CDI. Oh. <laughs> I just want you should you to get in touch with him and see if he still has it. Oh, God. I, w I And I remember it was the big one, too. Like Ugh. It was a really big one. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, I had to laugh. Like That's pretty crazy. Philips CDI. Who... The, the game. Well, I think it was something where his dad bought that because it had the, like, golf games and stuff like that. Like, certain games that he, his dad would like, you know. But so they had it out in the Did he have, room. like, the Mario and Zelda games that were on No, it? no. Hmm. They did not have stuff like this. We will uh, touch base on those in some later episodes coming up with some other stuff that are already filmed, so <laughs> be excited. Uh, but from there, um, when I got the 64, I thought that was just groundbreaking, you know, 3D polygonal graphics and, like, GoldenEye. Yeah, GoldenEye was our main game. GoldenEye so became our big game. That was probably, I mean, I'm not absolutely not going to say my first obsession with games, because that was going back to my Sega. But, like, whenever I'm like, man, this this looks so good. But, it look, it's aged so poorly. But I, I was so excited for it. This Nintendo 64, and, I mean, I could just, like, I got a Game Shark, and I realized I can go in and change coding mm -hmm. and walk through walls and go look at stuff that no one else could see. And I was just, wow, look, what, look, what am I doing? <laughs> and uh, wound up getting my PlayStation, and I liked really became in love with like Tomb Raider and Spyro and Metal Gear Solid and all that like, Gran Turismo. I will say Metal Gear Solid was one of those games that kind of wowed me when but, I first um, saw it. The next generation, um, like the Xbox and PS2, that is about whenever I got my first job. And uh, I didn't really know which one I wanted. 
And so uh, I went and rented. And I did this myself, you know, I didn't beg mom and dad for it, but I went and rented an original Xbox. You know, the ah, big, so they get big, the big carrying case. Yeah, had yeah. The, big, the big plastic case with it. And I took it to my friend's house and I rented car games. Uh, Project Gotham Ra- Racing. That's a good one. And so we plugged this thing in. That was Rockstar, wasn't it? <sighs> or was that Midnight Club? I don't, I, I don't know. <laughs> um, but I do know we plugged this thing in and it had like this uh, like theatrical mode that you can like put a camera somewhere and drive around it. And I really thought then, like, this looks real. And, no. <laughs> but I mean, it was just like the most real looking thing I'd ever seen at the time. Oh, was, like, oh my God, look at this. Oh, that was uh, Microsoft published, but okay, Microsoft it was not. Okay. Um, I think what I was thinking of was um, Midnight Club. Midnight Club, gotcha. Was, uh, was Rockstar. Yeah, okay. Sorry, so, continue. And so I, I rented that, fell in love with it, wanted it. And then something else came out that kind of changed my life forever. Oh, Grand Theft Auto Three came out. Yep, yep. And uh, I think it changed everybody. Yeah. And so I got, including me, my, my PlayStation Two. Um, <laughs> it was so funny because I was working at the video store and I, I, I made five fifteen an hour. Yeah, five fifteen an hour. This was an after school job, and I had to put a PlayStation Two on layaway mm. at the store, and. The amount of money I was making a week on a good week where I got a lot of hours is about ninety dollars, and so I would put fifty every week to getting this thing out. And so I was working on it for like three or four weeks. You were determined. Oh, dude! I mean, I, I wanted this thing, <laughs> and so I mean, I was what seventeen, sixteen, seventeen? Yeah, seventeen. I was driving, and so I'm having to pay for my car insurance, my car, oh, all man. my extra food. Um, you know, shit that I wanted to do by myself. Of course, like mom and dad's like, oh, you have a job now. You pay for your own shit. It wasn't like that. It's like any additional superfluous stuff that I wanted to do, I had to pay for. Yeah. Yeah. And so I wanted this thing. So like hanging out with friends on a Friday night after school wasn't going to happen because you were like, I need to save money. I need to get this game. Friday like, nights I was working. Uh, well, I mean, to, you know, on the weekend or that. yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was working because I wanted this system and I wanted you know, music equipment and I wanted car stuff. But, um, I remember one day I finally had my check enough to get this PlayStation 2 oh. out of layaway. I went up there and my manager and I'm like, I, I want to get this thing off layaway. She's like, what are you talking about? I'm like, what do you mean? She's like, we don't have it anymore. I'm like, what the fuck? Oh, oh. she had actually ruined the surprise. My dad had went and bought it early for me. Oh. Paid off the rest of my layaway and was going to um, give it as a gift. Oh. And she had, I'd went up there because I was excited and I'd gotten paid and he was going to have it at home for me when I got there later because I didn't have the day of working. And so she ruined the surprise. Oh, well, your dad came and got it. Oh, <laughs> but I got that and Grand Theft Auto 3. And I was. Oh, man. I bet you sat there for like, I bet you had some all nighters. Like. Well, I mean, I've, I've never been like. For that kind of game, I would imagine no, you could, even no. if you didn't do it before. Like, I've never been one of these people that were, like, an all-night gamer. I've never been one of these that could sit for hours and hours on, at a time and play. I mean, like, even when we would do our really long streams for, like, Resident Evil 8, we st- I still needed to step away for a bit because I I get bored really easy. I think yeah, it's like a, yeah. Like an ADHD thing. But that, <laughs> that moment right there, that gameplay, those graphics on that system was kind of what leaned me to wanting to always play games. You know, like, yeah, I loved Mario. I loved Contra. I loved Sonic and the need for speed. Yeah. Everything leading up to it. But yeah, but I mean, but that moment, like even now when we play GTA five, it's already 10 years old. I still get a lot of fun out of it. Yeah. I mean, that kind of angled my direction. I bet I could go back and play Grand Theft Auto three and I still would have a great time with it. It's still fun. Yeah, because there's so much to do, even with the limitations of the PS2 or or whenever it came out, you know, because it, it did eventually make its way to Xbox, but like a couple years later. Yeah, 2003. Um, so I looked but, this up because I didn't want to fuck up my story. <laughs> yeah, so that's why you got a PS2, which was a great choice. Yep. And I mean, and the funny thing is, like, the PlayStation 2 
was the first system I, I really sat down and like, okay, I'm going to play through games. I'm going to beat games. Beforehand, like, oh, I'd rent it, play it for a little bit. I'd never really tried to sit down and make my way through every level. Then I'd take it back and never give a fuck. But, I mean, the PlayStation 2 was the first one, like, I, every game I played I wanted to beat. Yeah, you know? yeah. I, I remember, um, and this is going back to that same person that had the Philips CDI and the PS1 and uh, N64. And note, this is how I got my N64, okay? Did you beat up somebody and steal it? No, I didn't beat up anybody and steal it. Why not? It was given to me. After you beat them up? No, As didn't mercy. have to. So, being, uh, if anybody doesn't know, I am a... I don't know. I'm a, you, you do know. <laughs> I'm a professional wrestling fan. Yes, I do know that. I've been a fan since I was a kid. And still to this day, love watching it. And I think it's the men in spandex you like, right? Yep. Yeah, just so, wrong with that. so you know. Um, anyways, <laughs> <laughs> that uh, at that time, as far as uh, when the Dreamcast was on its way out, uh, like being released or like on the way being out, released. Like, okay, no, okay. being released. Okay, first released in 1999. Because um, I do remember it was nine nine ninety nine. Clever. Yes, that was that was the date that was released. Uh, at the time. Uh, WrestleMania, you know, WWE or WF at the time, WrestleMania happened in April, as far as March, April of that year. And it was a big one. It was a really big year for WrestleMania. Basically, Stone Cold Steve Austin. I know you know, obviously, who he is. Uh, I've seen Ball his guy, face. Bald guy, goatee. So he looks kind of like you? Yeah. Okay. But yeah. meaner. You know, Make a mean face. Oh shit, Stone Cold. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, he was going up against Shawn Michaels, and this was the first time that Austin had ever won the big one, the big world title. He was in the main event. They even had Mike Tyson there as a guest enforcer, um, just kind of promoting <laughs> the, people's ears. <laughs> kind of, yeah, sure. Um, but it was a big deal. So... We would, we, for pay-per-views, you know, which WrestleMania was the biggest one of the year, uh, we would all get together at uh, that at this kid's house. And his dad was a wrestling fan, too. So we'd all watch together on the pay-per-view. And it was a cool thing, like, you know, you know, because the, the dad would, I, I'll say it, had a legal cable. So, yeah. Oh, dare Ooh. So we were able to get the pay-per-view channels like that, as far as for free, or at least his dad was. I mean, this is a long time ago, so I can I can say it. You should this. say his name and let you know. Let whatever, the authorities. Get whoever him. like <laughs> was sold to Spectrum, you should go and get him. Uh, it was Time Warner Cable at the time. Oh shit, they're still around. <laughs> um, but anyways, <laughs> made me laugh too much about it. So we were watching it, and even though his dad knew, um. Because you can pretty much tell who's who's going to go over, who's going to win. If you've watched it enough, you know, you can tell. We're just kids. And they had a bet between the kid and his dad. And his dad knew, so he was playing him? He was playing along, yeah. Okay. And so we were like, yeah, Austin's going to win. Because we were all cheering for him because he was the face. He was like the good guy that you wanted to win. And we knew, like, he was definitely going over. Yeah. Like, he was going to win. And that's what it's called. Going, going over. over? Yeah. Okay. Means you're going to be the winner of the match, um, and his dad was like, "No, Shawn is going to keep the title." Like, Haha, you know, how much you want to bet? And then uh, my friend was like, "If if Austin wins, you got to get me that new Sega Dreamcast," you know, and they really did this, like, okay. and the dad knew like that Austin was going over, that he was going to win. And, you know, any like I said, anybody that's watched it enough knows. And he was rooting for Austin. I he think just, I know where this story's going, yeah, so, so let's see. Long story short, Austin wins, gets the belt, friend gets the Dreamcast, right? Now, one of the launch titles for the Dreamcast, other than stuff like, you know, Sonic Adventure or anything like that, was UFC. C-Man. Oh, damn it. UFC, Ultimate <laughs> Fighting Championship. Okay. The very first game for them. And, of course, there's a PlayStation 1 version um, for that game. Um, but otherwise, the Sega Dreamcast was the premier version to get. 
Um, I remember, and th again, this is an, this is another story where it just wowed me. He popped it in, and when we started watching, like, you know, the physics, like the 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 people fighting and everything, it wowed me because it was so fluid, and it was so like realistic in terms of like the models that were put into the game because they were actual fighters, mm -hmm. you know, like Tito Ortiz and uh, the Iceman Chuck Liddell. Yeah. The, the real fighters at the time that were huge. Um, and and did he, Chuck Liddell get his ass beat a couple times. He did. Okay. Um, <laughs> and so did Tito Ortiz. Uh, but anyways, yeah. Seeing like their models and look how great they looked in the game. Like just blew my fucking mind. Like, because this was like the most realistic sports thing I had ever seen at the time. Like, and of course the uh, Sega NFL like 2K stuff started there. And that also looked great as far as the football stuff. Uh, I know it's not like, you know, I'm just saying like watching it, like that evolution into the Dreamcast. Yeah, because this is before the PlayStation 2 was even announced. Um, when the Dreamcast first came out. <laughs> and we yeah. know what happened. Yeah, we know what happened there. We know what happened there. So Sony's like... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's just you wait. Um, but yeah, it floored me seeing UFC um, as far as the first... It, it's not a great game. Don't go back and play it. I promise you, you're not going to be happy with it. Play the newer ones if you want that sort of action. Um, but just at the time, it was so amazing looking like... Just the like again, just admiring the graphics and the models. Like I said, the gameplay is not all that great. It's been since refined, you know, in the other later iterations of UFC games. Um, and then also getting into like PlayStation Two stuff, like the the wrestling games. Watching those evolve, you know, doing like create a wrestler and you have something that looks like that actually belongs there. Instead of somebody that looks goofy as hell. We did that on a stream before. <laughs> yeah, I love that stuff. That's so stupid. But it's fun. You know, yeah, I'm, like, I'm a not a wrestling fan at all. The wrestling games are great. It was fun, especially the Nintendo 64 stuff. Yes, the WrestleMania so. 2000 and No Mercy, which are... And then, of course, uh, the WCW games like World Tour and uh, versus, uh, WCW versus NWO Revenge, which is great. Yeah. That's I mean, what we played was Revenge. That's fun. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's like... I don't know, it's... For every generation, you can always go back and look at something and be like, I'm talking about console generation, not like people generation. But you can always go back and look at something like, wow, look at this. I mean, even with old stuff, you can always go like, man, check this out. This is crazy. <laughs> like uh, Vectrex. Oh, yeah. Like, I mean, you can go for those of you that don't know what that is. I'll get Julian to pull it up right here. Yeah, uh, that was a good timing. Yeah, it's pretty good. Um, <laughs> in 1982, this company called GCE, uh, General Consumer Electronics, put out this console that had a nine inch vector screen on it and it was pretty much like the closest way you can get to having your own home arcade machine yeah. at the time and it was like 3d capabilities in the early 80s i mean this system is what 41 years old now and it's fucking crazy but i mean even whenever uh we played that the first time i was like wow look at this yeah i was i was pretty astonished how how fluid it was yeah, because I mean, older games usually were not like that, at least in terms of consoles, like the 2600 or, you know, or something like, uh, pong consoles or anything oh, God, of that yeah. sort. Yeah. You know, yeah. Vectrex definitely was able to, you know, make something so, I mean, it's unique and I mean, I'm looking at it right now. Um, and it's it's so unique, but man, is it play very smooth. Yeah. It's one Even of to these, this day. one of these systems that, really escalated in price um so if you're a collector i highly recommend getting that system that is actually my favorite retro system um it's i can definitely of, say it is for you yeah absolutely it's 100 percent is but i mean it's just the coolest thing that i've seen that came out from like the second generation of consoles i mean it's just fucking wild <laughs> now i will say when it comes to something that wowed me I always loved whenever the arcades would try some new things, new like ideas. And what was cool is with the on rail shooter stuff, like House, um, of, the like House of the Dead. Okay. Yeah. I loved, loved like the sit in stuff. Like Lost World Jurassic Park was yeah. one of my absolute favorites to do. I, I remember I would go to the, to the skating rink 
because I love going every weekend and stuff like that. And they had... Did you like skating and stuff? Oh, yeah. Really? Or just going there? I was good. Art? Really? Yeah. I liked skating. Um, and they had a Lost World sit-in cabinet in their arcade area. And just remember, like, you know, just getting that gun and, like, shooting the T-Rex coming at you. And it's, yeah. you know, it's like... Like, like what? what was it like? <laughs> I should get a thumbnail of that <laughs> one. Please. Uh, I want that on repeat just over and over. <laughs> um, we had an, another video store kind of like that in my hometown um, in the mid-80s. But it had a sit-in cabinet of... Uh, I think I know what you're going to say. What? Star Wars. Star Wars arcade. Yes. And, you know, to, to sit in this thing, I mean, it was... We actually went to this arcade not too long ago and played the stand-up version of it. And even now, it's Vector, which is kind of funny. We tie that in. But it, it like looks so badass. Like, they're legit 3D stuff coming yeah, at they, you when you're flying this and, X-Wing. is like, my God. And what's cool, if you ever get a chance to go... I hope they still have it. Uh, as far as up to Asheville, the Pinball Museum, they have a sit-in Star Wars Atari cabinet. Uh, like, they have the, one of the originals. I saw where someone on YouTube had gotten the arcade one up. Yeah. And yeah. built it. Now um built I did, a sit in. Uh, yeah, I remember that. That video. That was yeah. crazy. Now the, my problem with that is is like it's kind of pseudo vector graphics. It's not using the legit vector screens. They look different. I mean they look different. So I mean it's not quite the same thing. It makes sense that they can't use the original hardware for something well, of like course, that. You yeah. know, obviously. But it's cool that the guy took the time to build like a comfortable like because they're really small like my my fat ass is not fitting in there very easily like because i tried to fit into the one into the pinball museum and i was like like i don't like this <laughs> like trying to get in there and like i'm playing you know <laughs> yeah i remember playing that shit when i was little man <laughs> it was meant for kids it definitely was they were thinking about them in mind for that for that game and i i think that's cool and then Still wow me today for something that is, you know, decades old, is the first time we got to see uh, the Death Race cabinet at Wieners and Losers. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I might still have that footage. If I do, I'll put it up here. That was one of the first, uh, it's going to be our first, like, we just put one out. Oh, my fucking brain is not working. Blast <laughs> processing. One of the first blast processing segments we're going to do was a little thing about death race yeah which uh i think 70 Might still do 74 or 76 i think it was 76 but um it's very controversial yeah because yeah. you know you're actually running over people as far as like <laughs> little pix little vector pixel people but this is kind of a large cabinet yeah with like two wheels two steering and... wheels and gas pedals and one big screen and a pretty much a big ass light up marquee and you're controlling like a little Car, three or four yeah. pixel car that drives around and your objective is to run over people. But it's extremely fun. It's very fun. Like, I, I was, like, I, I remember us having multiple rounds, like, trying to play the game and everything. I mean, obviously, after a while of standing up, you know, and doing that, you you move on to something else. But we played at least about three or four rounds. Yeah, it's fun um, shit. Yeah. And it still wowed me that it, that it existed. Some of those cabinets in, at Wieners and Losers, which is a... Uh, uh, 80s art, like 80s and 70s arcade. Yeah. Uh, that is run by, uh, as far as a, a friend of ours who uh, does it privately out of his home, yeah. and in Winston Salem. So, uh, yeah, highly, highly recommend that place. Wieners and Losers. It is uh, the largest private collection of Golden Age arcade machines on the East yeah. Coast. And there's a I lot. I think East of Mississippi. I think he has about 150 arcade machines. Yeah, I mean, it had he has. Turkey shot, I think it's. Oh, that one's fun. Turkey shoot. Shoot, yeah. Turkey I thought shoot, it was yeah. shoot or shot. Yeah. But yeah. Um, you, just, you, know, you, you have to like shoot feathers, turkeys like, and feathers. Yeah, real life feathers inside the cabinet. So. But he has <laughs> uh, what Atari battles on with the actual tanks. Yeah, and, that was cool. But yeah, I mean, you can't really say enough about that. It's, I mean, <laughs> such a great place. Look it up. Really, uh, Adam the Woo did a video about it. Oh, cool. So he actually went there and stayed as like an Airbnb and arcade um and arcade. So, I guess the last thing I will say that wowed me, um, I mean, other than, so, you know, other, other stuff, like, I mean, obviously, when we got to the original Xbox and the Doom 3 tech demo came out, that was pretty amazing to watch. 
at the time because nobody had really done lights and shadows like that in a game, you know. And that game was heavily based on what you were looking at with your flashlight and stuff because it was really bringing the horror back to Doom as far as Doom 3. Um, and then the last thing was this Unreal Engine 5 demo. With uh, the t- like, record? Well, Unrecord was a... Yes. Oh, God. But the Unreal Engine 5 tech demo where they were going through the ancient temple. Oh, yeah. That I've was that video. incredible. Yep. Like, I was floored and excited because I knew we were finally getting games that were looking this Almost photorealistic. photorealistic. Yeah. Like, for me, the, the last two things I'll touch on that's kind of, like, wowed me. Um, it's a little outdated now, but it still wowed me, but playing Ace Combat 7 on VR because like you get people that's never played VR before and you get them to sit there with a flight stick. <laughs> we did and, that not too long ago. Yeah, I mean we had a party and we did this last week but you know the plane will come up on the aircraft carrier and people, their reaction is like wow. And yeah, you're sitting you there in the cockpit and, and you see everything. <laughs> and then before that I say the last thing that's really gotten me like in person playing it that really had me floored in terms of how pretty it looks was red dead 2 yeah red dead 2 yeah. like uh, is graphically impressive i mean there there are way better games out there now um like god of war and all that kind of stuff but i mean this game has already been out five years i know and the original is, last of us really floored me with some of the visuals yeah um play that on ps3 yep and seeing like i mean obviously they really wanted to value you there but when you see like the giraffes and like the the city square and all that, like, you know, and all the different animals running around. Like, that whole scene was pretty, pretty cool. You know, just, you know, that evolution of graphics. And, and of course, um, even though the movie did not do great, I will say when we got to have sort of video game graphics appearing in, like, movies. So, like, that Final Fantasy, the Spirits Within movie. Oh, yeah. Was impressive as far as how at it looked. At the time. It, yeah, at the time. And stuff like that. Now it's Uncanny Valley creepy. <laughs> it's a little Uncanny Valley creepy. Yeah, but uh, I was like, wow. Like, the, you know, we're going to get movies, you know, that are, you know, ba- like, with our favorite characters. And, and even though Final Fantasy Spirits Within did not have any characters from the games. No. It was all a separate story. That's so funny because I remember thinking when that kind of stuff was happening. You know, like, oh, here... <laughs> These are digital people. And I remember thinking then, that game, that movie's been out, that game. Yeah. That movie's been out for about 20 years now. Yeah, it's been a while. I remember thinking like, wow, one day we're not going to have actors anymore. We're just going to have these digital people. Yeah, and that's what the strike is about. Oh my God, yeah, that's true. The yep. current um, the writer's strike. Writer's and... strike. It's about how to maintain their... Likeness. Yeah, and... I mean, it's a battle for their likeness. Because I mean, the AI stuff is starting to become a problem and like um, you can go on YouTube right now and pretty much look up any dead singer and ha- there are like multiple songs of AI versions of them singing along to it and it is creepy yeah how how uh, close it is like I mean I, we're listening to some of like Freddie Mercury doing uh, like Eye of the Tiger I mean granted those are songs out at the same time but yeah like just stuff like that and it sounds just like him it's fucking creepy <laughs> So, I mean, Skynet's doing his thing, man. Skynet. Yeah. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, that's that's what I have as far as things that really surprised me. I mean, other, other than, like, I mean, obviously, anytime the Grand Theft Auto stuff comes out, it's, or, like, you know, what Rockstar produces, like, Red Dead Redemption 2. And, yeah, or anything with Unreal 5. Ooh. Yeah, and then, of course, some of the PC stuff that's been, like, put out there as far as, like, trailer-wise, like... There's there's one I mean other than Unrecord because Unrecord was impressive. Yeah. Um. There's one where it's like you're stuck on like an island and it's like with dinosaurs and it's almost like first person version of Dino Crisis. Um. And I can't remember what it's called, but man, does it look f- fantastic! Like it's usually I think it's using Unreal Engine five. It might be four, but yeah. Um, I don't remember what it's called. If I find it, I'll put it up here on the screen. Yeah, and there was another one I know that you would be happy to hear about that I cannot remember the name of, but it is a horror first-person shooter using Unreal 5. And you're walking through, like, this old abandoned hospital with a flashlight. And a oh, my God. And it is Ooh. horrifying. I was, but, uh, PT floored me, too. 
Yeah, I'm like, and PT looked amazing. Yeah, and that was before Unreal Engine Five. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, that's that's what I have on my list of things as far as uh, obviously the first time seeing Mortal Kombat, uh, seeing Unreal, not Unreal, but uh, Ultimate Fighting Championships on Dreamcast. I will say Goldeneye definitely floored me in terms of gameplay. Then, um, it's still fun. It's yeah, still oh yeah, fun it's still game. fun. Um, and then, of course, uh, some of the... Well, I went right out of my head. Like, <laughs> Last of Us, uh, as far as that scene, like some of the scenic scenes, and then, of course, Grand Theft Auto, and, of course, Unreal Engine 5 and Unrecord, and all these things that are big using Unreal Engine 5. Yeah, I know. Like, I, I've mentioned it a couple times, but, like, my mom was a big Atari person back before I was born. And she would always tell me stories of playing Pitfall and Haunted House. <laughs> and she, I remember her describing Haunted House as this, like, that you're this person that, you know, like, the only way you can see is using a match. And you have to, like, go around with this match and find things and bring them around. And I'm like, I'll play it the first time. And I'm like, there's four pixels. I'm like, what type of imagination did you have to have to use this? You look like Meatwad. Yeah, I mean, it's like this little thing with eyes. I mean, like, it has like two little dots in your circle. But then that's what there was to be excited about. You know? Just like now, we're like, man, what's this crazy shit that's coming out? It can't get better than this. Yeah. <laughs> it's what the words that you would use. And of course. And it does. And it gets better. Yeah. And we got all this VR stuff that's really, you know, changing the game a little bit. Ace Combat 8 was announced. So hopefully it's on the if you get PSVR two. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's the goal, but I'm sure PS five and VR two would be about a grand total. Yeah, so yeah. so I mean I don't know, maybe sell the Panasonic Q and get that. <laughs> well, I think that's pretty much it for us on this episode. Um we uh we definitely have talked about some things and uh Obviously, what do you think of the Mario costume mascot being restored? <laughs> How do you what like do you... the way that thing looked? <laughs> How do you uh, think, like, what do you think about as far as PlayStation Plus going up as far as in prices? Do you care at all? Uh, how does it affect you if it does? Uh, let's see. And what are your thoughts on the new Atari 2600 Plus? Yeah. Are you going to get it? Are you going to yeah. try it out? Do you, are you interested? Yeah. And let you us know. know in the comments. I mean, interact with us. Let us know what was your big wow moment when it comes to Yeah, yeah. Games. Tell us your wow moments as far as in gaming history, as far as what you saw that made you just go, wow. Whoa. You yeah. know. So yeah, yeah let, let us know. Interact with us. You know, hit us yeah. up on Facebook, hit us up on YouTube. Yeah, obviously they you know the Facebook is right there, you know, at uh ah, Facebook.com slash retro engine duo. Yeah, there you go. Vanna White it there, you know. She's old. <laughs> She's pretty old now. Yep. And um uh, obviously if you're watching on the YouTube or even if you're listening on audio, make sure to go like the video, subscribe see our other stuff as far as on the channel yep we have some more shit coming and there's new stuff coming <laughs> oh yes and Therapy. obviously audio people if you're uh listening to something on spotify or uh you know obviously uh iheart radio or anything of pandora anything like that i don't even think we're on pandora but anyways <laughs> <laughs> whatever you're listening through uh follow us uh, so that you get notified when the next episode comes out yep and thank you for being with us so far through 10 episodes 10 episodes it's crazy 10 episodes right there so uh I hope you all have a good one and we'll see, see you next time. Yeah, next time. Remember that the is. 11. The number the number 11. Number 11. All right. Bye.